Some of your critics have argued that uh, you have the tendency to withdraw when things don't particularly go your way. Um, so are you committed to staying for the long haul this time? That's really not fair because I had 14 cases. Um, I was already sentenced to five years in prison. I didn't withdraw. Um, what happened after the last general election was that um, Pakatan leadership more or less felt that it was best to accommodate Tun Mahathir. And, you know, my, my dissenting view, despite whatever my contribution towards the general election, my dissenting view then was seen as destabilizing. That was the attitude of Pakatan Harapan leadership. That was the attitude of, of PKR uh, leadership. If you're in my shoes, you know, um, first, I wasn't really interested in politics in the first place. I mean, it's quite obvious, you know, I was not made for politics. Um, secondly, I've more or less done my bit. Um, and I understood the thought process at the leadership during those times that it was best to accommodate Tun Mahathir and and not pay attention to dissent. So what choice do you think that I have? The best thing to do is to accept that hopefully they'll be able to do justice to the mandate that was given to them. You know, I could once in a while still give my opinion, um, but I also understand that the opinion was not really welcome, not just by Pakatan Harapan and also by the public at large, to be frank. So, um, in that situation, you know, the best thing for you to do is to accept that you've done your bit. It's nothing personal. I was not interested in any, any position anyway. I was, I was only hoping that we manage the transition to uh, a fledgling democracy properly because such changes all around the world usually were short-lived. It was not managed properly. I understood my place and I moved on. And to be frank, I had no intention to come back. But it's precisely because after Juho election, it was quite obvious we are going back to pre-2004, where the um, fence-sitters' support for Pakatan is around 10 11%. And when you already have another um, coalition, which is Pakatan Perikatan Nasional, um, already surpassing 25 to 30 percent um, voter support, that really risks pushing PKR and Pakatan Harapan to become a third party in a three in a multi-party um, system. And anywhere in the world, the third party usually don't survive. And unless we appeal to the fancy test again and try to bring up Pakatan Harapan and PKR to, to being a second party, um, everything that I think a lot of people have worked hard for for the last two, three decades, most probably will be written to square one because what we are facing now is a scenario where if the top two biggest coalitions in parliament is Malay-centric uh, with no differentiation of ideas, no differentiation of approach to economic policies, then voters, generally the fancy test who are not happy now, um, you know, five, six years down the line will wake up and realise that we don't really have a choice. It's either this one or that one, but we know nothing will more or less resolve the problems radically that, you know, that this country needs. So I think appealing to um, fancitors and to energize the fancitors becomes extremely important now. So that's why there's no question, you know, I, I think what was the past, um, there's no point to talk about it. I, I can go on and on and on about what had happened. Um, that would just put, you know, a lot of people uncomfortable because, you know, um, it had happened. I think the focus should be how do we capture the imagination of the fancy test again so that they believe that it's worth doing, that change or, or um, 
continuously putting your faith in a progressive um, coalition is something that is worth doing for them.